Everyone who works with music should know this about amplitude, but going off the comments from my last video where I talk about compression and my Delta Expose plugin, a lot of people didn't know this. So what am I talking about? If I take some audio and I zoom right in and see the samples and then use some level automation to change the amplitude of some of those samples, I make this one a bit louder, this one a bit quieter, that one a bit quieter, what's happening there? Am I changing the overall loudness of the music? No, I'm not. I'm probably just introducing distortion, but I can go even further than that. If I go through this audio file and change all of the individual levels, I can take a horrendously low quality MP3 recording of some hold music played out the speaker of a telephone recorded on the inbuilt microphone of a camera. Your call is now first in line. And then turn that into an orchestral recording of Mozart. And if you think I'm joking, you don't understand digital audio because that's exactly what we can do. We can take the world's worst hold music and use a special audio file in order to add and subtract to the individual levels of the samples to get different amplitudes for each sample. And then we get Mozart. I'm not joking. There's no trickery involved here. As you can hear as well from the audio, there's no remnants of the world's worst hold music in the background. There's no MP3 chirping or weirdness from the MP3 compression. There's none of that. There's nothing. You just hear the orchestral recording. So right now, the audience watching this video is probably going to be split in half. So half the people are going to be saying, obviously, trivial is just obvious and the other half of the people are going to be like what they're going to have their minds blown by this let me know in the comments which group you fall into so anyway why is this so everyone who produces music should know this and if you don't know this it doesn't matter because i'm going to tell you right now so here's the formula hold music minus mozart equals the delta between those two signals but like most things in mathematics, we can rearrange the formula to get a different formula. So we can have delta plus Mozart equals hold music. Or you can have hold music minus delta equals Mozart. Let's confirm this. So we take Mozart and let's add the delta. And we get the hold music. Let's now try hold music minus delta. So for anyone who didn't know, normal digital audio, like a wave file or something like this, there's no other information stored in this file apart from a bit of metadata at the start saying the sample rate, the bit depth, the channel count, etc. And then the rest of the file, the actual data that is stored, the only thing stored are amplitude values. It doesn't say anything about time, apart from the fact that all of the samples are in sequence. It doesn't say anything about transients or harmonic distortion or frequencies. It doesn't say anything about anything in a WAV file. The only thing it says anything about are amplitude levels. That's it. Amplitude is the only thing stored in the wave file apart from the metadata at the start and the fact that they're stored in sequence. It doesn't say anything else. So when people say that there is other information there that the delta doesn't show you, no, the delta shows you everything. It's the full difference, the complete difference between two signals. If you have signal A minus signal B, the result of that is the delta. And that is the full story of the difference between two signals. There's no other information to be captured in digital audio since digital audio consists purely of amplitude levels. In order to get some other information about the frequency or something else, you need to use this explicitly stored information and somehow transform that into the implicitly stored information. So instead of just having a bunch of amplitude values in sequence, so on the Y axis we have amplitude, but on the X axis we have sample 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up to 1024. Instead, we can transform that using a Fourier transform function. And on the X axis, we've now got 
frequency bins. So we have 1024 frequency bins and then we have the amplitude for each of the frequency bins on the y-axis. So we've switched out the x-axis from just a sequence of the samples to be frequencies. And now that will give us a snapshot of those 1024 samples. And then for the next 1024 samples, we're going to get another different snapshot. And then the next one, we get another different snapshot. And when we put these snapshots uh, in sequence and we play that in sequence, the same way that when you watch a movie, you've got still images in sequence, we can now watch the frequencies move in time with the music. And that's what an FFT is, a fast Fourier transform function. And that's how people typically see the frequency content contained within the audio file. But that frequency content isn't stored explicitly in the WAV file. It's just the amplitude values in sequence. And you need to then window that and do the fast Fourier uh, transform function to actually see that as frequencies. So what my Delta Expose plugin does is exactly what it says on the tin. It exposes the Delta. So it takes two signals and plots the Delta over time. So we take sample A amplitude minus sample B amplitude, and then we just plot that over time, and then we can see stuff. We can see the difference between two signals over time. Now, that's really useful for inspecting compressor curves, the gain reduction curves that a compressor makes. But many people were saying in the comments, Delta Expose isn't showing the full story because it's just showing the curve that the compressor does. But the curve is just one thing. There's many different things that a compressor does. It does stuff with distortion and maybe stuff with frequency and this and that and transients and just showing the curves that the compressor does. That's not the whole story at all. Wrong. It is the whole story. It's the entire story because we're seeing with Delta Expose the exact precise difference between two signals. And if we have a test tone that's not going through a compressor and a test tone that is going through the compressor and we see the delta between those two signals, we see the entire complete difference between those two signals. And this is why you get fuzzy lines with my Delta Expose plugin when the compressor is doing something other than just smooth straight up gain reduction curves. And so Delta Expose doesn't show you what the compressor is doing which is causing this fuzziness it just shows you fuzziness so a much better way of commenting about my delta expose plugin is not to say that it doesn't show you the full story it does show you the complete difference between two signals what is more accurate to say is humans need to use other tools to comprehend the differences which are exhibited in delta expose as fuzziness so if you don't see fuzziness, it means the compressor is doing nothing at all apart from just smooth gain reduction. And it's not doing anything that a stock compressor from your stock DAW compressor probably can't do. It's probably just doing the most vanilla curve imaginable. And if you paid a lot of money for it, you probably just wasted your money. But when you see fuzziness, it means that something else is occurring there. But Delta Expose doesn't tell you what else is occurring you just see fuzziness now it is completely accurately exhibiting fuzziness it's just that humans can't comprehend what that means it's like speaking computer language or speaking a language you don't understand so that's when we need other tools to see what this fuzziness could possibly mean we could use for example Burton EQ analyzer and we can see what's happening with frequency response and with phase we can see what's happening with the harmonic distortion by using tools like plugin doctor we can maybe take a signal and pass it through the compressor and another signal not through the compressor and then phase reverse that and listen to the delta so not running it through delta expose where we just see fuzziness, we will listen to that instead. And if we have no gain reduction on the compressor and it's still exhibiting fuzziness, then we can listen to that and see if there is a big difference. And if we can't hear a big difference, then maybe we can use Bertram EQ Analyzer and see if there's some sort of phase shifting going on there, some, some sort of um, phase rotation or phase irregularity, which is contributing to a fuzziness because it's saying that the signals are different, but they sound the same. So maybe it was just a non-phase linear anti-aliasing 
aliasing filter or something like this. So we can use other tools to try and understand what that fuzziness is, but it's not accurate to say that it doesn't show you everything. It does show you everything. It's just what it's showing you might not be human comprehensible. So then we need other tools to understand, to comprehend what that fuzziness actually means. Using additional tools and using Delta Expose, we can really get to the bottom of what different compressors are doing. And when we do that, we start to realize that there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. There's a lot of fancy interfaces. There's a lot of really talented graphic designers making beautiful interfaces of these plugins. But there's a lot of very standard, bog standard DSP going on behind the scenes. And you'd be surprised. At, okay, despite the fact that some plugins have slightly shorter time constants in their ranges or slightly longer time constants in their ranges. But generally speaking, once you start looking at all of these different compressors, so many of them just have the same kind of curves. Maybe they're a bit shorter, maybe they're a bit longer, but the curvature is pretty much, they're all pretty much the same. And so if you've got one compressor that can do that kind of curve and it has a wide range of attack and release times, then you don't need all of these other compressors because it's all basically just doing the same thing. And if you close your eyes and actually do a blind A-B test, you might not be able to hear the differences between the 350 euro compressor and the free compressor that comes built into your DAW. It's actually really disappointing at how little interesting curvature you get on so many different compressors out there. Most compressors just do the same vanilla stuff. There are a few compressors that I've seen, so a few handful of exceptional compressors that do something really interesting. And it sounds interesting, you can hear the difference. And that's what I'm really interested in. But they're few and far between, and those really special ones just do a couple of special things. It doesn't like do the whole wide, broad landscape of special things that you could possibly do, the weird and wacky things that you could possibly do with a compressor. So that is why I am very busy. I'm working a couple of plugins right now, but I'm very busy coding my pro version of Versatile Compressor because I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to put in really weird and wonderful curves that you will be able to hear the difference on. And it'll be like, wow, Nothing else sounds like this, and I'm so excited about this, but it's so hard to do this. It is very difficult to do really interesting DSP that no one else has heard, but I am doing it, and I'm already seeing using my Delta Expose plugin, wow, this looks so different from anything else on the market right now. So I'm super excited about this, but it's not done yet. Gonna have to wait a bit longer. But yeah, almost everything I'm analyzing with Delta Expose just shows the same old curves, regardless of price. There's no correlation between price and interesting curves or gain reduction whatsoever. And some people are saying, yeah, but this one adds some distortion or noise. I don't want my compressor to randomly add noise. If I want to add noise, I add noise myself. I want interesting curves, gain reduction curves and interesting cool flavors of compression in a compressor. I don't just want like bog standard vanilla compression curves and then this is adding white noise and distortion. I can do that myself.